I think if I could bring this to full circle, another point is that you have to understand that there is internal and external, both sales and marketing. The process starts with their first interaction, period. Every single department has to be on point. Customer service can't say, oh, I don't do sales and marketing. Yeah, you do. How you engage my customers or my clients, how you respond to the email or don't respond to the email, how you speak to them, right? From a sales perspective, how quickly are we handling a problem? How quickly are we overcoming a customer service issue? From a marketing perspective, what's the language that we're using? All right. <laughs> Welcome to the Social Proof Podcast. We're about to help your uh, your whole life as an entrepreneur. We're going to help you make more money. We're going to help you with marketing because marketing is more important than sales. So, Donnie, do you agree with that? Sales is more impar- important than marketing. They're Brian, both very important. Brian, sales or marketing? What's more important? Marketing. If you could be the best in the world at one thing, sales or marketing? Sales. Sales. Marketing. Marketing? Let me hear your let me hear your marketing response. Marketing is at the beginning of the sales process. You can be the world's best kept secret. You can be the best salesperson ever. If nobody knows what your product is, it's done. Donnie. Every billionaire in existence has a skill set in sales. The richest people in the world are all gifted in sales, whether they're selling products, services, or ideas. I think so. Absolutely. Why if I that? innovate, if I invent something or I'm the innovator of something, I have to be able to communicate that. That's a sale to anybody before there's an interest in saying, yep, let's take this, run with it, market it. You have to be, if you want to make money in this world, sales, period. But if you look at that same list of the richest people in the world, millionaires, billionaires, They're not all skilled at marketing. They're usually going to find help in the marketing area after they've already sold a concept. I don't know. I don't know. Mark Zuckerberg, salesman? Yes. No. He absolutely sold his ideas. No, for sure. No. Obviously, we have to make a sale. We have to make a transaction to make money. However, if you have an amazing product and you understand how to get this in pro- this product in front of the masses, mm-hmm. people will buy it by default. But what did you have to do first? Market. Market. You had to sell the idea to someone first. But selling the idea is a concept of marketing. Yes. They go hand in hand, but the question was, if there were one thing that I'd have, if there were one thing, because sales gives me the ability to sell my offers, your offers, their mm-hmm. offers, right? I don't have to have a specialized skill set to do anything else to make money other than sell somebody's ideas. But let me ask you this. How are you selling the idea that nobody knows about? Well, it depends. So I might be I might know you. I know somebody and you might be an investor. You might be somebody who knows other people. Right. I sell you a concept and you say, oh, I am extremely gifted in the area of marketing. Let me go tell three other people about this. And we're going to rally behind this idea because you sold me on it. I love it. Let's do it. But would you not agree that the product cannot go out to the masses without marketing? So now we're talking about mass sales. That's different. We're talking about mass marketing. The conversation, though, is if I could have one skill set or one gift and do it, what would it be? That would be sales. Now, if we want to scale and we want to generate a certain m- amount of money, now I need marketing. They go, they're go; they both necessary. But if I had to choose one, I'm choosing sales all let me, day. Let me tell you why. Well, I, I think it's going to be based on everybody's individual experience because I think they're both really important, right? So sure. let's say, um, I don't know if Ray Kroc was the best marketer, but he saw an idea and he was able to sell it. He was a a a milkshake salesman, right? So he can go sell somebody on getting a franchise. He can sell great skill set of sales, but that hasn't one. I don't really enjoy the sales process. Mm -hmm. I definitely don't. um, I don't look at myself as a salesman Mm -hmm. more. uh, I don't really look at myself as a marketer either, but if I had to like have a skill set of like rallying people around something, even Mm -hmm. if they don't buy it, I think the rallying around, um, I'm a big, I'm a big advocate of if you build your brand, you'll have very little problems with making money. 
because you can market to a lot of people. If you have a following of people, mm -hmm. the people who want to like make money will get in front of you and make offers. Yeah. So that's why I've decided to get into podcasting. I think, I think you're not looking at um, sales and marketing for what it means wholly. You're looking at how it applies to you. Let's, for sure. But in order to successfully market something, you have to understand the psychology of how people buy. I understand. Understood. Right? Which is, I have to understand the psychology of sales before I can successfully market. I can't just get, I can be in this room with all these people in here and say, I got all these people here. I'm telling you that I have toothpicks for sale. Who's buying? I have to understand what would make you buy this toothpick. I have to understand how you enjoy spending money, where you spend money. Do I have the right people? In the, they go hand in hand, but I have to understand the psychology of people's sales and purchase behavior before I can successfully put that together a marketing campaign. That sounds a lot campaign. like marketing. I was just about to say that. That's no, literally but what you're, the what you're not getting marketing. is mm -hmm. in order to be effective at marketing, you have to understand first the psychology of buyer behavior. That's sales. I understand that, but I'm not good at sales. You don't have to be good at sales. You sold an idea. So even if you got all these people, all these people came in here, right? For no expense. They came in here because you sold them on the idea of what it means to be in this room. But he had to market it yeah, but that's to not, them. He did, them but he already sold them no, something. No, no, no. That wasn't a sale. So definition of sale is the exchange of a commodity for money, the action of selling something, mm -hmm. or to a period during which a retailer sells goods at reduced prices. That's a sale, right? So sales is a transaction. Can I get some money out of you? Now, in terms of sales, like, all right, well, I had to sell my wife on marrying me or something like that. I get it. That's more semantics. Mm -hmm. But I'm talking about what you just described is marketing. I think understanding marketing, like understanding marketing, it, you have to understand. I think they go hand in hand. They but marketing do. is a whole nother concept of me yeah. being able to sell something, me to say something to you and get the money out of your pocket. Marketing is a method in which you deliver your messaging to a group of people so that they desire to buy something that you're selling. We've got marketing definition. Marketing, is, the activity or business of promoting and selling products or services. Yep. So even by everybody being oh, in just this, because there's a word in there. Yep. Like we, like, <laughs> yeah. like you were right. That doesn't even it. by everybody <laughs> being in the room right now, they were marketed on the idea of being on the social proof podcast. Correct. They were they, sold. They wouldn't have to be sold because they were, they, I mean, even if they were sold, there was nothing to buy. It's a free podcast. But even if they were, they were marketed, they had to be. No. no, they have to be taught the idea like, all right, cool. Being on the Social Proof Podcast this is going to build up your business. You're going to be around expert level entrepreneurs. They were marketed to that. I Even agree. the concept of selling in its sense is marketing because the yeah. thing about it, if you're going, say, a door to door salesman like you brought up, right? Mm -hmm. That's a form of marketing. That's door to, that door to door is a form of marketing the same way door to door letters, the same way Facebook has. These are all forms of marketing. It's reaching and contacting people to promote your services or products. Mm -hmm. So everybody has to be marketed here to even be sold something. Mm -hmm. You cannot sell something that's not marketed. Yeah. There's no sales. There's no transaction without people knowing what you have. I can't go to McDonald's and buy a burger if I don't know what McDonald's is. I can't be on the Social Proof Podcast if I never heard what Social Proof Podcast was. Mm -hmm. Marketing is the backbone of a transaction. There will be no transaction if there is no marketing. I think I figured it out. Mm -hmm. I think I figured it out. Y'all ready for this? Okay. I believe, and this is how I look at it. Sales is a transaction. And marketing is awareness. So would you rather would you rather want the skill set of being able to make a transaction or the skill set of being able to uh, effectively make people aware? Because most uh, like a good marketer doesn't necessarily in a corporate arena, I would I would say a good marketer needs to understand the sales psychology and all that kind of stuff. But some people are just great marketers. There have been some amazing marketers that I met in high school that didn't do no research. They didn't understand business, but they knew how to brand themselves, whether they're just funny or they hoop or they brand themselves to be um, prom king or queen, right? That's understanding how to rally people behind something. But that's different than being able to, I'm on stage. There's a specific skill set of being on stage and selling to a large audience. That's a, you got to know how to sell, how to get the money out of people's pockets, how to get that transaction. I'll mm -hmm. add on to that, right? The biggest commodity nowadays is being a personal brand. 
When you're a personal brand, for example, Kylie Jenner became a billionaire at 21 years old, right? She doesn't know it, need to know how to sell, but because her awareness is so large, so many millions and billions of people know who Kylie Jenner is, she can drop a toothpick today. Mm. Be like, this is the Kylie Jenner toothpick. People will eat it up. She doesn't mm. need to know any sales. She doesn't need to do anything, but her personal brand is the marketing. Mm -hmm. She doesn't have to sell at all. Yeah. It's the same thing with Conor McGregor and his tequila, The Rock and his, uh, and his vodka. Like, they don't have to do any sales. Their marketing is done by the personal brand. Hence, marketing is the backbone mm -hmm. and marketing creates all. There's not a marketing team that doesn't have a sales expert on their team. I, in a corporate arena, a co correct. A company, I mean, yeah, course. in a business. There, are, there, are, there are sales teams that don't have marketers. Because the marketing has already but been we're done. But still, we're still generating money. I, I was one How? for a long if you time. Can't, if you can't find nobody to sell to. <laughs> so the, the thing is, you don't under, you're don't you still selling. So you said something earlier about you know sales just being a transaction for money. If somebody walked into my store and I normally sold a t-shirt for $20, mm -hmm. but today I'm doing a 100% off sale. So your transaction amount is what? Free. Am I still ringing that through my register? Yeah. Because I have to account for the item sale. Right. So sales is the I most. Guess. You don't have to sell somebody or take us out for free. <laughs> yes, you you do. Nice yeah, you do. I don't I don't take everything that's available to me for free. Do you? Somebody has to buy into the idea. You're thinking well, about sales. You're thinking about sales. And nobody walked into the door. That's also an issue, which is why I'm we're, we're saying similar things. Mm. Both of them are necessary. Yes. But if I had to rely on my livelihood and my life for mm -hmm. which one, I'm selling all day because my ability to sell allows me the ability to attract investors, mm -hmm. customers, marketers, employees, and people who can help this thing get bigger. I'm selling I feel that. all day. And here's the thing. It's all like your own perspective. I think if everybody was good at one thing, then, I mean, that wouldn't be valuable. So right, because I there's think, also no point in being able to market and get 500 people in a room and we have nothing. And we've seen that happen. Oh, over, oh, we've yeah. seen that happen. You can get 500 people in the room for free or for, you know, whatever. And we do our thing. We impact them. We do this and we have nothing to offer. Yeah. That's crazy. tragic. It's yeah, I, I think in, in the point, the moral of this story, and I want to, I, what I like to do is get into some uh, some takeaway points on how to be a better sales person mm -hmm. and also how to be a better marketer. I would look at Donnie. I believe you are incredible. So I would say you're I think you're good at both, but you're better at sales than you are at marketing. Absolutely. I think I'm better at marketing than I am at sales. From what I see from Brian, I think you're a blend of both. I think you. you're re I, not really. I think you're really good at both. So I want to like, let's, let's give some takeaways for those that say, yo, I really need to learn how to sell better. What would be some, uh, let's go into maybe five or six points on what they need to do to sell better uh, online and offline. Yeah. I think the one, the number one most important skill set or characteristic that you have to have in order to be dynamic in sales is your ability to listen. Um, so many people blow the deal by talking too much. They just, they want to talk, 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 talk. You're talking over your prospect. You're not listening for what they're telling you they actually need. And in a successful, in a simple and successful transaction, the idea is to let people talk enough to where they tell you exactly how to close them. Mm. Yeah, I'm really struggling, you know, with my my relationship isn't working out too well. We're on the verge of divorce and blah, blah, blah. They're going to tell you. But if you're like, yeah, so we have um, family counseling where we can really get in there with your children and get the whole family involved. You can bring your in-law. Ma'am, slow down. <laughs> My issue is just my relationship with my husband, not the family. So now you're taking me in a direction by talking too much that I wasn't even thinking about. And you've introduced a level of confusion for me because should I be thinking about my whole family? Should we have the in-laws come in on this counseling? But if you had listened, you'd know that it was just me and my spouse that I have an issue with. And you could have closed me in five minutes. Now we got to do three follow-up calls. Because you talk too much. Learn how to listen. Wow. So number one, learn how to listen. What's the second point that you'd have on sales? I think you should absolutely be your first customer. Mm. Because a lot of people don't understand the psychology of who they're even trying to sell to. Yes. So it's like, if I'm trying to sell somebody on this house, right? Like, 
what does this area look like? What is this? Mm -hmm. What is the average income? If I make X amount of money, would I be able to afford this house? What kind of schools would I be looking at? What kind of playgrounds? What kind of resources, community activities? And I feel like a lot of people don't take the time when they are selling to even understand what this person really needs. Like, for example, right? Like I used to have to book an event space, right? So when people are coming in and they're just like, oh, you know, I need, I don't know what I look like. Well, I've already done the research for you. I know what many people you're going to need. I know what amenities you're going to need. I'm going to know how many tables and chairs you're going to need. I'm going to know what food you're going to need. So I've been my own customer so I can better serve you better because I've been in the same spot as you. Yeah, mm. that's good. That's okay. good. I don't know. So um, <laughs> what? Don't look, I'm saying don't look to me for advice. Okay, let me give you, and maybe you guys can help me with this is my number one. <laughs> This is my number one challenge with sales. It's my fear of people looking at me like I'm trying to sell them something when, in fact, I am trying to sell them something. I got now, something yeah. for you. Talk to me. I got something for you. Can, can I, I could proceed? Please. I, I firmly believe, and actually Grant Cardone said this, if you're not selling them, you're hurting them. Yes, yes, yes. And I that. firmly believe that because I've seen so many people, and I mean, we're all coaches, right? We're all coaches. Yeah, yeah. I've seen the vast, stark difference between those who pay for the type of information and the way they execute on it. Because say, for example, that I pay you twenty thousand dollars, they should be able to become a podcaster, right? I gotta get to it. I just yeah. paid this man twenty thousand yeah. dollars. But if I just got the information for free on like a web class or like an ebook or whatever the case may be, there is no pressure. There's no motivation to really go out there and like hunt and kill yeah. and really go after those sales because it didn't cost me nothing. Yeah. For every transformation, there has to be a transaction. And I firmly believe that the more people generally pay to receive this type of information, the more they'll work at it and the more they'll execute. Yeah. And I heard it the same, very similarly, but just in case somebody resonates with it differently, people deserve to pay you for the transformation or the result that you can get them. Mm -hmm. You deserve to pay like and not only do you deserve to pay, you deserve to pay at a high level. The higher you the higher level you invest in yourself, the more seriously you take it, the bigger the outcome typically. So you don't really deserve to be sitting around all day and night just like Googling your way to your result. It's an option for you, sure, but you don't deserve for that to be your only option. You deserve an expedited track. You deserve the best information. You deserve access to the best resources. And in order to do that, I have to. It's my responsibility to present you with the transformation that you're looking for. Whether you buy it or not, that's on you. But I have an obligation to provide you with the transformation because if I'm really about serving people at a high level, I have to let you know that I have the solution. You deserve to be sold to and you deserve to buy. Yeah, I know I have a really, let's say I have a really, really good product. And I know that the product is extremely discounted. Like, for instance, we were just having a conversation, right? Where um, she was like, yo, do you do coaching? And I said, eh, kind of, <laughs> you know what I mean? I'll do one-on-one -on -one coaching, but only for podcasting. I'm not, not general entrepreneurship, not marketing, branding. If you need help with your podcast, I'll do that, right? But um, even the amount that I'm charging is gonna save you a year of trying to figure it out. You know what I mean? In 60 to 90 minutes that we're gonna be together, it's gonna save you a year. So mm -hmm. the money that I'm charging, okay, it's I, I, I understand, mm -hmm. but it's still the feeling of what that dollar amount is being perceived by the person, right? So I could be offering something that's $20,000 on sale for 5,000. Yeah. I don't know why I should like feel that, um, that I don't know why I feel the way I feel, but it should be, yo, you're getting this for only $5,000. I know that. Yeah. But I don't, for some reason, want to be looked at as a salesperson. I think maybe you're not communicating the value of that offer the way that you just did it. You just said that in order to, uh, you believe that it was 60% off or something like that. Like you're charging 60% off of what it actually costs to do well, this. Yeah, well, it's not a percentage, it's just uh, I know I'll save at least a year of trying to figure out. A year, out. that's what it was. So- <laughs> Painting the picture of the value in that, like you is their perception is based on how valuable a thing is to them. So if you do a better job at communicating the value, like, listen, this was my journey. It took X amount of years for me to figure this out. I want to save you two of those years. Right. 
This is how much your time is worth. This is what you could be doing in six months. This is what you could be doing in 12 months. It's completely up to you what path you believe is the best for you. But here's the value that I offer here. And here is what that costs. Now, if I'm being totally transparent with you, the average podcaster that I help get started, they go on and they generate six and seven figure podcast. So a $5,000 investment is a fraction of the result that you're going to get. And you paint that picture. Either you see, and you can't care about the outcome, which is what you do a lot of. You care too much about the outcome. I will sell all of you guys David's $5,000 podcast course. I will present that offer. I could care less if you buy it or not. I'm only looking for the people who see the value and what I have, and quite honestly, I only want to work with the people who see the value. I don't want to have to convince you. I don't want the people who are on the fence like that's way too much money. If you think it's too much money, there is a three hundred dollar course somewhere. Go get that. All right, but I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't. I'm not focused on the outcome. I'm just really focused on the feeling in the moment. That's the outcome. You feel like cheesy selling. I don't, selling I don't care whether I sell it or not. Well, no, that's part of the outcome. Like your emotion around the transaction is a part of the outcome. Right. So now we got to, I just want to figure out logically everything you're saying makes a hundred percent sense. And I get it. And I feel you still, still, I can't control how I feel Mm -hmm. though in the sale. I feel like, and you know what I'm good at? So like someone would pay for an ad and they just give me like what to read. And I'll sell that joint. Why? Cause it ain't mine. Because you're disconnected to the sale. I'm dis- disconnected. detached from the outcome. You have to be detached dis- from the outcome. You're disconnected from that. The outcome doesn't matter to you. You were paid to do this. I did my job. I put it out there. Right. If people see value in it, they'll buy it. But I did my job. But you're connected to your mm. outcome. You're connected to your sale. And that's why you feel that way. Think of a number in your head. How much do you think it would cost for me, a pretty successful entrepreneur, to coach you every single day? to give you all of the game. I'm talking about every day for an entire year, Monday through Friday. I'm on, I'm on a a virtual call teaching you how I've done the things that I've done and me updating you every single day in real time on all the business moves that I'm making, all the negotiations that I'm in, everything that I'm doing before I actually do it. How much you think? And let's say Monday through Friday. And then on Thursdays, we do a Q and a where not only do you get a chance to ask your questions and get them answered, but you get to ha- you get to hear the answer from a whole community, hundreds of other people on a call, and you get their answers that are going to help you too. What do you think? And once or twice a year, get together, free conference that we all get to come to, and you get to meet all these people that you see virtually. How much do you think that would cost every single year? Ten thousand? Not even close. It would probably be closer to a hundred thousand because it's just I don't. I, I my my time is valuable, and to give you the sauce that's going to help you make millions, I'd have to charge you at least a hundred thousand. But what I've done is created a community where you get the advantage of learning how to become an entrepreneur. You get to network with hundreds of entrepreneurs every single day. You got a community that keeps you inspired and excited. You will read a book club with us every single day. We will also have an event where we come together once or twice a year for free. We do all of that for $399 for the year. Now, you can also get it at $79 a month, but $390, 400 bucks, the price it costs for two pairs of Jordans, no tax, of course, you get all of that, $399. Now is the time you join the morning meetup. You've been watching the Social Proof Podcast. You've been watching me build my business. You've seen where it started. And if you're just now like understanding like what's going on with my brand, Go ask somebody. I've got receipts of things that I built over the last decade, okay? Uh, I am willing to coach you. $3.99 for the year. Listen, go to themorningmeetup.com or click the link in this video. Um, Let's get back to the episode. But keep in mind, I want to coach you. Let's get started. For you, though, it's it's personal. Yeah, For you, it's personal. personal. I'll promote. So, okay, I'll put it this way. If I I have my own restaurant, pushing the fact that I need y'all to go support the restaurant or go eat at the restaurant would be more uh, emotionally. I'd be more emotionally connected to that than saying, yo, you've been to Houston's. You had the chicken sandwich from you. First off, have y'all ever had the chicken sandwich from Houston's that joints fire? You hear mm-hmm. me? And we get no affiliate. Yeah, I get no affiliate. <laughs> but I feel so good putting somebody on that. That's why I think I would honestly be a better manager than talent. 
because I can sell somebody else. Right. Mm -hmm. Or I love, I, I built my whole career around promoting other people. And that's the lane that I'm in. So you know what it is, Shans? What's that? As I'm listening to you, you're actually, and I've told you this before, you're a dynamic salesperson. You fear judgment. I do. 100%. And that is Ooh. your issue. That's real. Yeah. That's real. He, he fears judgment. So I will put you out there. I don't care what people think about you. Respectfully. But me putting me out there, mm -hmm. I care deeply what people think about me. And you are not necessarily afraid to sell. You are afraid to be judged. Mm -hmm. That's Damn, a fact. Peeling back the layers of David Chan. Yeah, man. Goodness <laughs> gracious. Wow. I Thanks think also a big session. thing to add on to what Donnie was, was, was just saying is that just to kind of just kind of add a little more colors, you got to sell the payoff and not the pieces. Yes. So whenever, whenever I like, even if I'm doing webinars, coaching, whatever the case may be, I'm just like, yo, what does your life look like a year from now? Like, let's take everything. Let's, let's take the credit. Let's take the funding. Let's take the space. Like, take all that stuff away. What, like, how does it feel to be in the same place a year from now on? And I tell people all the time, like, yo, like, I, I retired my mom. I take care of all of that. Like, I pay for the cars, the houses, everything like that. You, would you want to do something like that? Yo, oh my God, I want to do something like that, please. Two, two, two. All right, cool. Well, it's just going to cost you this much. Is this much worth your freedom? Is this much worth getting out of your own way? Yeah, you know what? I would do that 10 times over. All right, cool. Sign right here. Right. Boom. So let me, let me ask this, um, let me ask this question real quick. Mm -hmm. So let's say, for instance, you all, uh, there was a, uh, a person who, okay, how, how can I say this? Okay, there are people, and I've seen it, I've seen it, where people stretch. And I've been in a scenario where I will stretch and spend my last for a bit of information for whatever, right? I'll spend my last. And it's prompted me to go out and get it. But in the moment where you know this person doesn't have it like that. And it's a possibility that it does, that they just don't do the work. You know, your information is good, but they don't do the work. You ever feel a way about Absolutely. Oh, I, you want, oh, you want me to do it? <laughs> so basically you're working with somebody, your information is great. You pour it all into them and they don't do the work. No, 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 no. I'm saying like in the sale of the process, you know, they're stretching, giving their last. Oh, I see. To do this oh, okay. thing. Mm -hmm. One school of thought is, and we all know, that's what it takes. It takes you to say, okay, I'm going to like go all in. I've, and most people just never go all in. Most people just never have their back against the wall and say, yo, I'm going to make a commitment because mm -hmm. it takes sacrifice to be successful, right? Mm -hmm. The other thing is, it's not 100% that this person's going to actually do the work. Right. So what are you feeling in that moment? Unfortunately, it's not my problem. I can sell you a pair of jeans and you spent your last $35 on this pair of jeans mm -hmm. and you might go home and not wear them. You sell t-shirts, yep. right? If somebody came to you and spent their last $25 on a t-shirt and they never wore the t-shirt, how do you feel about that? If they spent their last $25? If they came to your kiosk and like, man, it's so dope. I'm excited to meet you. I want to, I don't really got it, but I'm going to do this. I'm going to get it. I want this shirt. And they buy it. And they never, ever, you run into them a year later and they never wore the shirt. How do you feel? I don't feel away. You don't feel away. You cannot feel Only away. Only because the number is smaller. Right. That's your problem. You're thinking about how much they're investing. That's their problem, right? Mm. Now, the thing is, I don't target people. My target isn't people who are spending their last with me. That's a decision you have to make. So there will always be people who invest their last in anything because I know that if they're not investing my last with me, they're investing their last with something else. I'd rather them invest their last with me. Because you know you're going to take care of it. Because I know that I'm going to take care of it. I know that people will invest their last in a bottle of liquor. People will invest their, their last in other indulgences and in, 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 in things. You'll, people are investing their last every day. If you got to invest your last, I'd rather you invest it in something that could pay off because I know what I got. You talking good. You talking good. That was good. Any that was thoughts? Good. That, was that was good. How All do right. you feel? I Because you're I'm, aggressive. I'm, I'm aggressive? Come on, Brian. I'm aggressive. You're a pit bull in these streets. I'm you I'm, are. I'm a Chewini. 
A Chawini, never say that again. <laughs> Yo. No, I mean, honestly, I, I firmly believe, like I mentioned before, if you're not selling them, you're hurting them. And if it takes somebody's last, like I've burned the bridge before. I've been there. And there ain't nobody like I put my last in my business. 22 right. years old. I literally dumped my life savings and it pushed me and propelled me to go out there and get it. So yeah. if that's what it takes for somebody to go out and get to the next level, I think once they do get to that next level, they can't feel bad and they won't feel bad. If they don't do what it takes to get to that next level, then like Donnie said, it's on them. Got you. Uh, do we have any more sauce on sales? Uh, we got plenty of sauce. Also. Oh, the other thing that I will say um, is know your, it's two parts. Know your product in and out mm. and know your competitor's products. Mm. Know your product in and out. Mm. And, and know, know your, your competitor's, competitor's products. Product. Yeah, because people are always going to compare your offer to something else. And you have to know how to shut that down right away. Yep. Yeah, Pete, you know, one of the one of the statements that I hear all the time is I'm not worried about what my competitors are doing. That don't matter. Yes. Yes, it does. <laughs> yes, it absolutely does. Even if it's just to understand your point of difference. Mm -hmm. Right. You have to know your product in and out. It is a huge pet peeve when I am on a call or in a store and I am asking about the features of a product or the benefits of the service or do you think this is a good fit and you can't answer me. It's like, I'm not really sure, but I could get somebody to help you. Why are you selling to me then if you're not sure about the product that you're talking to me about? Don't talk to me half knowledge about a product. And then half at the knowledge. Don't don't do it. Don't talk to me half knowledge about a product. And if I say to you, if I am buying these jeans from you and there's a store right next door that also sells jeans and I'm like, mm, I was looking at the jeans that they have right in the window. How are yours different? Do you think yours hold up? Bad? And you don't know about the person right next door. I don't want to buy from you now because now I have to do the work of going to now you're sending me to them, right? You're sending me to this person. And what's going to happen is your offer may be better but because they know more about you than you knew about them, they're going to be able to explain to me their point of difference. And I'm buying because they seem more knowledgeable. Mm. Yeah. I was at, I was at this uh, podcast conference and a lady with StreamYard. So StreamYard is a, a streaming service where you can kind of stream on YouTube and like these different avenues, Facebook all at the same time and that like do live webinars and, and virtual podcasting. And I use, I use Ecamm and the lady I was like, man, I've been trying to figure out the difference between StreamYard and Ecamm. I'm like, uh, kind of tell me. So she's like, all right, well, StreamYard does this, Ecamm does this. She knows it, right? And I said, well, what do you have over Ecamm? And she starts to tell me. She starts telling me. And I asked the next question. I said, well, what would Ecamm say that they have over you? Mm -hmm. And she starts to tell me. Hmm. It's like, yo, and, and then this is what took the cake. She said, honestly, I have both. She was like, I use StreamYard and Ecamm. Mm -hmm. And like, the, obviously there's some flaws on Ecamm, but she was like, I got to use it so that I know and I have a user experience. She's like, yo, you for you can be successful with both. Got to be a customer. I, but I'm going to give you these, 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 uh, these things that StreamYard does great. Yeah. And I'm like, yo, I want to use StreamYard now. Because one, you didn't bash the other company, mm -hmm. but you knew it in and out. You mm -hmm. actually use it. Yes. But you're like, yo, I use both. And this is why I work with StreamYard. Yes. I and said, yo, that was crazy. That's another point. So as a follow-up to knowing your product and knowing your competitor's product, when you have to talk about your competitor's product, don't ever bash your competitors. Absolutely. I will not work with people who bash their competitors because you're too thirsty for the sale. You don't have to dim their light for yours to shine. Mm. I just asked you about the difference. I didn't ask you for the drama. I just want to know the differences, not, not what they're doing so wrong and blah, blah, blah. Highlight your offer and say, well, they could probably improve here. This is what we do. And when people feel like you're giving them an authentic, honest answer, they're going to choose you every single time. Mm, I think I bashed some of my podcast conference competitors. <laughs> I for sure did. Just to touch base I apologize, on that. guys. Just to <laughs> Listen, if I was going to teach you how to make a million dollars, would you give me 10000 Like if I had a course teach you how to make a million dollars and you're po positive, you're going to make a million dollars, would you give me 10000 Of course you would. It's no-brainer, right? So in a calendar year, we make seven figures with the podcast. 
but there's 21 things that I extracted from that that you're going to need to launch a podcast, but I only got time to give you three right now. One is you need a distribution platform. The distribution platform is what you upload your podcast to. That platform sends it to Spotify, Apple, Google Play, so that your supporters can actually listen to your podcast. You're also going to need a microphone. You need a really good microphone so it's crispy audio. And three, you need an income strategy. This is not necessarily a hobby, unless you're going to make it a hobby, but I can teach you how I made the seven figures with these 21 things. Now, the good news is you don't have to give me 10,000. My ebook is only 37 bucks, okay? So listen, go to podcastebook.com and get the 21 things that you need. And I I can explain it in detail, all the things that you need, okay? Podcastebook.com. Let's get to the episode. I did. You def- you definitely said all these other conferences are trash. I did. You said yeah. that? Yeah. Yeah. I can't be on this podcast. In the podcast in the <laughs> podcast out, space, in the podcast space, there's um There's blood? I was I had it wrong. You you I was, was doing sales was wrong like this? That's how I was moving. He was uh, trying to create hype. That's crazy. And he was being a hater. That's you try to stir the pot. Yo, first off, let me be transparent. Y'all don't gotta like double down <laughs> on my issues. But go ahead, what are you saying? I w- some of the biggest advances I've made in my business were from watching other people's products. Mm-hmm. Being a customer of other one of the biggest things I always tell people in my program is that when I started out, the first thing I did was I called mystery shopped every other space in my area. Yeah. First thing I did, because I was just like, look, first of all, I didn't have have a mentor. Nobody was teaching it. So I'm just like, yo, I need to know what other people are doing right and other people are doing wrong so I can come into the marketplace and sell my stuff accordingly. I mystery shopped every other mm-hmm. business in a seven mile radius. How much do you charge? What do you what do you provide? How many customers? I want to know how booked you are. I'm looking at your views on Google so yeah. I can come in and be like, all right, cool. The most booked spaces in this area they're charging this. Mm-hmm. They're providing that. Mm-hmm. They have this type of level of customer service. They pick up the phone. Yeah. Their website is optimized like this. Their Instagram bio looks like that. And from that point on, we were able to scale our business simply by looking at other competitors. Even with my digital stuff now, I'm buying other people's products. Absolutely. I want to know what your onboarding looks like. I want to know what your customer service looks like. I want to know how your product is laid out. I want to know how fast it takes. I want to know if you even communicate with me after I buy your product. Brian, mm-hmm. did you work in corporate? Like eight, six months. It's so... It, First of all, I don't want y'all to miss what he just talked about. Um, I work with, I work with clients all the time or I get people, students, in fact. And part of my training program is to mystery shop, right? It, and I don't call it mystery shop. I just tell them to shop their competitors, do market research. And people really feel like it's highly unethical to do that. I don't want to, you know, go in there and pretend like I'm blah, 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 just to figure out what they're doing. It, feel, it makes me feel a way. You're probably one of those people. I used to work... <laughs> I used to work in property management, uh, leasing apartments. And one of our weekly roles was to go and shop our competitors, or maybe it was monthly, but we would have to go and shop our competitors. And what that meant, and because we we're talking industry language, what that meant is if I work at a property, I need to go to B property, act like I'm looking for an apartment, right? Um, I, I'll take off my uniform. I'll go in there and I'll act like I'm looking for an, appoint, uh, uh, an it's apartment. The act like I'm, do- it's just so Well, unethical. because that's what, that's what <laughs> marketers that's the name do. Of the game. This is what you have to do. You go in, Marketing. you act like you're, you're, you're acting like, this is the information we're taking back to our marketing team. So we're acting like we're looking for this apartment. I am paying attention to what does your office smell like? What does the leasing office smell like? Do they have cookies? Do they have coffee? Do they have lemonade? We don't offer any of those things. That might be a deal breaker. Let's get the cookies, coffee, and lemonade. I am looking at the journey. How do I get from the leasing office to the apartment? Are they taking us on a golf cart or are we walking all the way through the buildings? Are they avoiding the dirty breezeways or do they have a yellow brick road path that they take us by that they know is always clean? When we walk in, are they showing us fully done models or are we having to use our imagination here with the furniture? Mm. All those things matter because if their presentation of their product is better, we need to do something with our presentation. That information goes back to the sales team. I'm sorry, to the marketing team. So sales can perform at a higher level. Brian, I'm interested in what you would tell somebody um, who says, I get it. I get that Pepsi probably sent somebody on their marketing team or they sent a C there's, there's a, before I get there, there. I don't know if they do it anymore. I'm sure they do. And in, in, uh, what's that website? Um, not Backpage. The other one where there's Whoa. all kinds of listings. What? Pre- Wait, <laughs> what are you thinking about? Craigslist. Yeah. Craigslist. <laughs> because Backpage was one too, but it was for something different. What kind of, lift, what kind of listings? Craigslist. Okay. You ever no, saw You know the, something about it. Y- never. You know something about it. 
I heard about Backpage. <laughs> I don't know anything about it. But Craigslist. I'm too young. You're too young for this. <laughs> Craigslist used to be like the spot. If you needed to hustle up some money, we knew how to go through some Craigslist listings. And there are these mystery shopper positions where you could go into like restaurants and dine at these restaurants or into stores and people send them into hotels and companies. You do that. Companies have like the Marriott has a department of internal shoppers that will send you to their Marriott properties to make sure that you're presenting correctly or you'll be fired on the spot. Yeah, so if internally you're being shopped from your competitors, you're being shopped too. I'm interested in hearing your perspective on if someone comes to you and says, I just feel like it's real. Let's just talk to Dave here because Dave feels like it's unethical to go in and shop somebody else. What would you tell him? If I'm to be extremely transparent and I, I, with, with, not with not putting aside how most entrepreneurs would feel about this. There's a certain level of an entrepreneurship where you kind of have to play the game. And I've noticed this. Anytime like time you use the little play the game. I don't know. It feels sketchy to him. The, <laughs> <laughs> the biggest companies, Amazon, Tesla, Apple, they all have a certain level of, I don't want to say tactics, mm -hmm. but there are things that they just kind of have to go a little bit behind the book to say like, all right, cool, we got to get the job done. For example, Amazon, what they'll look at is they'll look at all the top selling items and then they'll create their own product. Yeah. Th this is something that they do on the regular, like it's yeah. public. You know, Apple will do the same thing. They will look at other companies' products. They'll be like, all right, what's top selling? We're going to make the same thing. Google, sure. all the top companies do this. So there's a certain level of just, it's it's kind of like, if I won't do it, somebody else will. If I'm not yeah. selling somebody, somebody else will. Yeah. So I'd rather get the sale. Yeah. I agree with that. I definitely agree with the secret shopper because uh, Cheesecake Factory had the same thing, but I was like internal. Yeah. My thing, I don't want to go, I don't. This is external. I'm not going to act like I'm going to, because you got to lie. You got to be like, Oh yeah. yeah! I will call up another so, venue and be like, "Yo, I need to have a baby shower. I'm 20. Yes. Like, I gotta have a baby shower. Yes. How much do you charge this and the third? Meanwhile, they don't even know I run mannequin. Like, I feel that. You see you what I'm saying? You it. have to do it. Somebody and else Donnie is gonna do has it. a burner email account. So for all y'all that be doing events, you got that little email wall up. It did. Donnie has a burner. I got email. a burner email account. I'm stitching sure. everybody. Neil got, got a burner, burner Zoom account. <laughs> I got a burner Zoom. Oh, I've seen it. I've seen. I've seen it. I've seen Neil. I've seen it. I can't show up as Donnie you. Wiggins That's on your Zoom. That's a fact. That's a fact. You. I want to know what's new in these streets, and it's not for me to come in and like steal from you and steal your ideas. But uh, I need to know what my competitors. One hundred percent. I got thirty burner Gmails. I'm not. So I shop someone. I've shopped Neo. Mm -hmm. Oh, I've shopped Neo too. I shopped Neo. <laughs> I shopped Neo. Neo is he's all over my burner email, right? <laughs> I've probably shopped you. Like, let me see. I'm not coming in as Donnie. So, and and the other reason that I do it is because I want to collect like your emails and see how you're communicating. If something stands out to me, this is important. I'm not doing it to like steal your tactic on your yeah, Zoom. I'm okay with that. I just want to like learn. What's doing? Oh, what do I like? Does you any do of this resonate? You want to steal the tactic? If no, you're... I don't. Or I'm able to communicate. I mean, you can't steal it. I'm though. also able to communicate at a deeper level. Oh no, 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 no! I know for a fact that he does this or she does that. Mm -hmm. But this is what we do, yeah. right? This is how we're different. You have to do that. And if you're not doing it, it's important to have some. I don't really have time to do it today, but I would have Brianna do it. Bri, I need you to hop on this Zoom, take good notes, record this, tell me what your feedback was. What'd you like? What you didn't like? What was the customer fee? What was the participation feedback like? I need to know these things yeah. so that it, it makes me improve. There's so many people in there's so many Coca-Colas. There's so many sodas. The people, you think Coke not sending they people in the Pepsi to see if the formula is the same, right. to see how pricing is different. There are people who do this. There are companies that are so grimy when it gets to the top level, they will install an employee in your company just to find out what's Dang. going on. That's a now that's grimy. They is it will, though? They, I mean, it's is it, is it though? <laughs> is it grimy? Is it though? <laughs> I don't know. I'm hiring. You want to put somebody on my team? <laughs> You know Yo, what I'm nah, I, I do agree with that. I think that's cool. Now, I wouldn't, again, I wouldn't go like do a tour of a, a apartment complex because I got to make up a whole story and identity. But what story I, do you have to make up? I'm looking for an apartment. I'm looking for an apartment. So, so, what are you, uh, so where are you coming in from? Oh, yeah, I live in Ohio. I live in the down. area. Moving. I'm, I'm moving. I'm as long as you got to lie. Well, and, and it's, and it's you, you do it different ways. So I used to get my best friend to come up there, like, girl, we got to shop these apartments because after a while, 
these people, you do it every so frequently because there's a high turnover. But after a while, some like I would walk in offices sometimes and they'd be like, Donnie, you here to shop me? Because I've been there before, <laughs> right? Like oh. they know and they've they've been to shop me. I love so it. they because they had shot me, they're like, girl, you here to shop me, let's go ahead and do this. And there was an internal language that we understood. But you would go so far as like bringing me with you and like, yeah, so we're in town. We're just looking, you know, mm -hmm. for a unit or whatever the case may be. You have to play the role and it may not be you anymore because you're goofy and you won't do it right. But you need to get somebody <laughs> who will. Are you talking about me or are you pop, just pop, saying pop. you in terms of helping the audience? No, this is really, really, uh, this is really helpful. This, this is, is helpful, good. Right? This is good, yeah. All right, so. Um, who knows their competitor? Who who got a competitor that, you, that you're shopping today? First of all, who I actually went to a, the podcast conference as a, shopper but i bought a ticket and i was telling them yo and you tried to bring me we were yeah. we were going in there to take all the sauce from the podcast conference who in here doesn't know their competitors you don't know your competitors okay i wish you had a mic i don't really know where i was gonna go with that <laughs> um i just want to know so one person um what do you do we need, hold on let's let's get the mic okay i'll translate maybe into you What'd you're you building an apparel brand Building an know, apparel um, brand. I know the list, but I don't know the end of my competitor. Okay. Brian, you're really good at this part. Like, you know what people are in your industry doing, mm -hmm. right? You're building an apparel brand. You know. I know a list of some of my competitors that would be considered a competitor, but I don't know, like, what you were just explaining in terms of, like, the deep dive and the information and things How like many that. competitors do you have on that list? Two. You need 100. So you need a hundred. I need you to subscribe to every one of their email lists. Talking to that mic though. Oh, can you can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. You got to subscribe to every one of their email lists. You got to follow all their Instagrams, all their Twitters, find all their handles, see if they own their domain, see if they own their trademarks, see if they own their IP. You also got to make you got to buy a product from them. You got to read their shipping a, I policy. I have a few. You have a few. You need all of them. You got to buy their product from them. You got to contact them. their customer support. Yeah. Oh wow. You got to contact their customer support. You got to try to return something. Mm. You need to go along the entire pipeline of this customer. You need to be a customer. If you're mystery shopping Hollister, you got to be a customer of Hollister. Sign up with their emails, follow their Instagram, try to return something. Because how do you know where they're lacking if you're not a customer of them? You know what I'm saying? Mm. If I want to see somebody who's another marketer, I'm going to subscribe to your webinar, attend your webinar, yeah. try to buy the product, return the product, follow you on Instagram, <laughs> DM you on Instagram, because I want to know. And the quickest way, and there's literally, there are professional companies that will literally find a company that's doing really, really well and build an exact replica. There's a company in Europe that does this to all, like they'll build a replica Uber, build a replica Amazon, build a replica all these big companies by literally going into their infrastructure and replicating everything. You gotta be a customer of your competitor to be better than your competitor. Mm. Yeah, don't mm -hmm. be buying my practice in the back, bro. I got Brian <laughs> charging back if they refuse to give him right. a refund, man. <laughs> <laughs> You you didn't charge back some people who refuse. I've oh, never charged back. Y'all not giving no. me a refund. <laughs> I've never charged. This is research. <laughs> but you want to know these things. You want to know like, For all right, sure. in the face of adversity, how does this company operate? Like, like yeah. are they are they behind For their sure. refund policy? Do they have a refund policy? Do they have a guarantee? Are they behind their guarantee? You like, and when I say a hundred, I mean that it's called the dream one hundred because two people isn't enough of a sample size. Yeah. You need a hundred people. You need small companies, big companies, large companies. If you're mystery shopping uh, for retail. Fashion Nova, Sheen, Pretty a Little Thing, Hollister, American uh, Eagle, uh, all these different companies. Yeah, That's you need uh, Uniglow. You know what? All these, all these big companies, big, small, medium, the local brands that freaking Tyrone and Justin making, like or whatever, like just random people. Like it doesn't matter. Like all these big companies, big, small, medium, large, their entire sales process. You need to know if you want to be better than you got to know them. Brian That's in wrong. his bag yeah, today. Yeah, in his bag. He in his bag <laughs> <today>. <laughs> First off. You're well, me. Respectfully. She getting that shot. I'll she got that, that shot. <laughs> shout out to Re. She, yeah, Re getting the shot. She's on the floor. Like, These learning. are things that I've Look, done. This is the process. She's learning. <laughs> I love it. Okay, so sales. Anybody got anything else on sales? I think Before we're Before we good. jump into marketing. Okay, There's marketing. so much, but yeah, we got yeah, yeah. to move on. For sure. Okay, let's get into marketing. Okay, marketing. The idea of awareness, right? So what type of information can you give someone that they just don't know how to market the product how to make it different how to communicate it yeah um i think my number one um what, what were we giving tips yeah uh get clarity on your messaging 
right? Mm -hmm. How do you communicate your offer? So you mentioned something earlier where a lot of people are selling the feature and benefits and not the payoff. Mm -hmm. And the messaging has nothing to do with the features and the benefits. So when you're communicating your offer, one of the top mistakes that I see people make, I'll go on your website and it's like, oh, I've got this group, uh, I've got this community. And in the community, we meet once a week and it's on Zoom and it's at 7 p.m. And you can invite a friend. I know nothing really about what the mission is or how this serves me. So your messaging needs to clearly communicate how this works for the ideal customer. We don't really care about the Zoom. We don't really care that it's at seven o'clock after dinner and, you know, after traffic. We don't care that we get you one time, two times or three times a week. I need messaging that's going to speak to me to say, this is what you're getting. You're going to leave feeling empowered. Being a part of this community makes you feel empowered. You've got a built in accountability tribe. You've got, you know, you're, you're going to leave in, in four extra results. Like you're no longer going to be stuck on the sofa anymore. You're going to be ready to launch into action. That's the messaging that's going to resonate with me if I am stuck, if I'm feeling like I don't have accountability, if I'm feeling like I'm not taking enough moves, not one time on Zoom every week at 7 p.m. So your messaging needs to speak directly to your ideal customer and picking an ideal customer would be number two. And whenever you're creating your messaging is really important, like from Instagram, when you're posting um, to your website, it needs to sound like I'm talking directly to you, not to several people. So when you see me on Instagram and I'm posting in my com in my captions, I'm not saying Y'all got to go get my offer. I'm saying if you are somebody who's experiencing mm, this, you need to click the link in my bio. You need the empowerment. So your messaging on everything is talking to one person. Pick a name. Who is your avatar? Is it Keisha? Talk to Keisha. Is it Joe? Talk to Joe. And all of your messaging is directly for Joe and Keisha because you're looking for a thousand Joes, 10,000 Joes, 5,000 Keishas. That's what I got. I know I gave one and two. That's strong. Yo, mine would, well, mine would piggyback so well off what Donnie just said. You have to be extremely good at handling objections. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people, for example, say, for example, I want to appeal towards. We'll take, sales or marketing? The marketing. Okay. Yeah, you Both. have to be. Yeah. Because yeah. the thing about marketing is what gets them in. And if I, if I hear about, let's take, for example, uh, we're selling cribs to pregnant mothers or whatever the case may be. If I have to market to pregnant mothers, it's going to be like, Hey, are you tired of cribs always breaking down? That might be objection. Number one, are you, are you, you're tired of seeing the super expensive cribs objection number two. And you know, they're just really, really hard to put together. Objection number three, then we have the perfect crib for you. Yeah. Right. That you, you want to handle objections so quickly and completely yeah. obliterate down to the ground. So they have no resistance yeah. towards buying your product. Right. Yeah. So by the time they come in and they see the thing, it's like, where do I buy? Yeah. So and you're just considering for clarity, all of the things that people would say yeah. would be a reason that they're not going to accept this message. I want to, I want to actually give every, like we're all entrepreneurs here. Right. So I want to give everybody an exercise oh right God. now. Oh, I'm so sorry. I, want, I get amped up. Sometimes. Before do you that, do that right? exercise real quick to answer your question, to make this make sense in the marketing phase, we are pre thinking about what the objections are going to be. Right. And we're including that in our messaging so that, Oh, it's like, Oh, they already answered that. And our, but on sales with objections, you're handling an objection that the marketing didn't cover in real time. Gotcha. All right. Gotcha. Yeah, Exercise absolutely. Us. yeah, absolutely. So we're all entrepreneurs here, right? The number one thing you can do in your business is write down a list of every single problem that your potential customer would have, right? Yes. If you're in, let's take for that same example, Chris, and, and, and I'm taking something that's completely unremoved for me. I'm clearly not a mom. I clearly don't have a kid, right? Mm -hmm. Say, for example, we're taking pregnant moms. <laughs> you don't have no kids? Nah. It's not clear. You uh, look true, like you true, 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 true. You look like a dad. You, you, <laughs> I look like, I think, respectfully, you feel me. So, I mean, say for example, right? I would write down every single, I would write down every single problem, right? Mm. They don't have time. They don't have money. They don't have the freedom. They they got their in-laws badgering them or whatever the case may be, right? Write down every single problem, your potential customer. And it also helps if you are your own potential customer, right? Some of y'all are moms. Some of mm -hmm. y'all got kids. Mm -hmm. What are the problems that you've had faced? And that's how you can make your product better. Once you write down- Whoa, wait. Because this is real good. What would be outside of what Brian just gave? What would be a problem or an objection somebody could have about a crib with the mic? Who's got one? What would be an objection? So I'll go first. An objection could be um, how fast will my child outgrow this? Mm. All right. Who's got another one? Was it you? 
No, who's got one right here? Because we want to we want to give you the exercise, but I want to make sure you know how to think about it, because it's not just cost. It's not just it's safety. How safe is this? Absolutely. Right. So to bounce off exactly what you said, can this crib be converted over mm. and be a, you know, a, 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 into, yeah, a toddler toddler bit. Correct. Yeah, into a toddler Ooh. bit. Anybody else right here on the end? How durable is, is this? How like, durable is it? Is it? One more. Absolutely. And then for me, it'll be like, what's the different colors this crib's come in? Okay. Okay. Or do, yeah. So well, are they customizable? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. I'm preferring something customizable is yours. Absolutely. All right. Next Absolutely. Step. So literally the, the point of the exercise is to get into the mind of your potential prospect and list out all the potential problems, all the potential objections. And like I said, it's a lot easier when you're your own customer. Right. And then step number two is to ease for every single product problem that you write, write What's the benefit of your product that addresses this problem. And if you don't have it, that's something to think about. Does my crib, is it affordable? Is it safe? Can it be converted to a to mm -hmm. a toddler room? Is it? Does it come in different colors? Does it? Can it grow with my kid or yeah. whatever the case may be? Is it gonna have something that's gonna kind of entertain them while they're in the baby crib or something like that? Can they flip out of mm -hmm. it, right? Are they, are, does it come with like maybe an in-house baby monitor or something like right. that, right? And you wanna start seeing, does my product address, does, the, my, does my product Y address all the problems X? And if it does not, you might have some more work to do. Mm. You see what I'm saying? And that this will literally, it's called an iteration cycle. It will instantly make your product better and better and better. And not only that, you'll be able to sell easier and easier and easier and market more and more and more. Mm -hmm. because and go ahead you just detailed the process of potential innovation too 100%. so you said something i'm not sure i've been off of the crib buying market for a long time but i know that new parents need two things urgently they need a crib and they want a baby monitor if you have a crib somebody put it together he said it first right if you're offering a I crib need my royalties. That <laughs> come, let's just say your crib comes with um baby monitoring from like three different angles. Fire. That could be the innovation piece. You didn't have to innovate the crib. You made an iteration that now makes this innovative. What if you had a, a, a piece that alerts you when the baby is pulling on that side gate too hard and then it triggers your camera. It, it syncs via Bluetooth to your camera. That's innovation. That's why it's so important to understand what your competitors are doing and what your market needs. Because now if you're into furniture building and you're like, I do a dynamic job with cribs, well, you're just putting a whole other crib out there. But if you understand the market, now you're like, but nobody has a crib with the motion sensor that says the baby is pulling or pulling up a little too hard. There's a little more, a little too much weight on this side panel. He might be about to flip out of it. And just the, oh, I love this. Now, literally, <laughs> literally, and I will, because I'm reading a book right now called Ready, Fire, Aim by Michael Masterson. Highly recommend everybody uh, check out that book. And he talks about something when you're marketing and you're going through this iteration cycle like Donnie just put out and you have that one feature that nobody has. That just 10x your marketing because mm. now you can say we are the only Person, we are the only company that offers X, Y, Z. Wait, wait, wait. Because in sales and marketing, what's important to identify are your onlys. Write that down. It is important uh, to identify your onlys. Yo, yo, <laughs> what are you say? I'm sitting here like. <laughs> <laughs> now, I see everybody's in the notebook. Yes. Like, <laughs> it is so important to identify your onlys. You don't want to be a company made up 100% of what everybody else does. You are the only person who does this. We are the only crib that has 3D exposure on camera. We are the only crib that offers cameras. You don't have to buy a whole other system. We're the only crib that will literally sync to your Apple watch. So, you know, if your baby is moving around too much when they're with the nanny, like you have to identify your onlys. What is it that you do? That is your only nobody else does it key for personal brands. It has something to do with your personality. It has something to do with your personality. I know in my space right now, I am the only coach that is as raw and transparent as all the other coaches out here right now. Nobody really does that like me. I'm the only one that brings you really into my lifestyle. And I coach off of experience, not just framework that I learned. I might not be only. the only who does that, but I'm, I'm, I'm like one of the only who does. But what is your only, right? And think about that, write it down. And that is your unique proposition factor. So when somebody says, well, what do you do that's different? Oh, well, we're the only ones who do this. And if you mm. don't have one, get one. Get one. Mm. Figure out what that only is. Put the camera on the crib. What is your only? Because people can't argue with that. Like they, they, once you've done the market research and you say, hey, look, listen, I'm the only one that is this role or I'm the only one that offers this feature. Yeah. 
They look to the left. They look to the right. They don't see one. Yeah. Sale is done. Mm. Sale is done. Yeah. Well, How are you feeling over here, Shane? I feel amazing. <laughs> I feel amazing. Um, I, and I guess my, see, I don't even want to give my suggestion because it's just not as much energy. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't as innovative. You know what I mean? It wasn't as like bar -y, You know what I mean? I got like regular information on marketing. But it's important. It's valuable. It is. Um, consistency. I like it. You got something else, Brian? No. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but yeah, I mean, but you know, let me let me tell you, this was a, a, a real lesson that I learned. So uh shouts out to Sarah, Sarah Fontenot. First person I really seen do this. She was in she was in a company with this, uh, she was selling this product, right? It was like a weight loss type situation. And every single day in her stories, she posted like the same three or four posts every day mm -hmm. like i can expect i know this one i know the next post yeah, the next yeah, story yeah, yeah. and it came every single day mm -hmm. every single day and i had to ask her like yo you post the same thing every day she's like i make sales every day yeah because we're we be under the assumption that the thing that we posted today that somebody saw it yeah uh, and a percentage for one a percentage of the people that are that, that are following you a percentage of them actually even get shown your posts. And then it's a smaller percentage of people that actually see it. Mm -hmm. Like that was actually paying attention or mm -hmm. like saw it. Right. So I think like pushing something every day consistently, like with the, with the event spaces, bro, you push it every day, all the time. And that helps with the marketing, right? Because one, the people who didn't see it, get to see it an, in another touch point that people did see it the first time. Let me ask this. How many people bought the morning meetup the very first time you saw it? Yeah. How many people, watch this, how many people knew about it a year before you, a year or more before you actually bought it? Mm -hmm. Ain't that crazy? Mm -hmm. I have a question, you guys. If you get in a car accident today, who do you call? Just blurt it out. 911? 911, right? What was it? Mm -hmm. Who else do you call? <laughs> Tom yeah. Nugent. Have you done, have oh you ever, my gosh. Have Tom. you ever done business with Tom Nugent? Okay. Who else do you call? One call. That's all. We see those <laughs> billboards every quarter mile and it looks redundant. Why on earth would they buy this highway full of billboards? You guys post one time and you think, I'm not going to overwhelm them with the marketing. Mm -hmm. If you ever get in your car and you're listening to the radio now, you hear that same 1-800-411-HURT commercial mm -hmm. over and over and over again. And it's like, man, they keep playing the same freaking commercial over and over and over mm -hmm. again. You might not need them this year. You might not need them next year. But you get an accident and you actually need an attorney. The first attorney that you're thinking of is mm -hmm. Tom Nugent. 1-800-411-PAIN, 1-800-411-HURT. Marketing is the, the best marketer wins, and it's about how consistent can you be at delivering your message over and over and over and over again. Yeah, I don't know if it's, maybe it's an Atlanta thing, I don't know, but I can see the 411-PAIN sign. You can see it's it. It's crazy. You can hear the jingles. I remember like the trash raps that, you know, when they got real hip hop and call 1-800-411-PAIN, call 1-800-411-PAIN. <laughs> like this is, I can hear it. You can see it. You wake up and you, you just visualize these things. You want your marketing to be, this is called sticky marketing. You want your marketing to be so sticky that People who don't even need your offer know your message. Yeah, I was I was telling somebody like how we're like putting this content. Maybe it was at the boot camp, but um, how we're posting two two um short two shorts on YouTube every single day. In addition to like our longer form, but two for sure every single day. Those two are now going on to Facebook. In addition to yeah. the two that Yanni's posting, so we're really like got four. Uh, post going to Facebook every single day of this same content. And it was like, yo, you don't think, um, you know, you're, you're going to uh, overwhelm people. And I'm like, you think people only see four posts a day, period. 
I would rather out of the 10,000, you're going to see four on be mine versus one or none or once every week in our world, we think, Oh, we posted it yesterday. Why do we need to post it again? We'll post, we posted it yesterday. We'll post it again. Friday in our world. We saw two in our customers world. They saw a million and didn't even see your two. Yeah. So like, yo, it, it was, I was so impressed by that and I learned it. And that's why literally we post something from the morning meetup every day, like the call in the morning, every single day. I'll take it down, but I post every single day because Sarah, she did the same thing every single day. And I was able to associate her with this company. Mm -hmm. And if I was ever going to buy a product from the company, who, who am I going to buy from? Yeah. The person I seen post something every single day in the store. It was like the same four or five, like back to back. It was crazy. Yeah. And this also applies not just to sell, but to condition. So it's like if you're creating a community mm. and you want people to become really familiar with your community, what you call your community members, uh, Trap does a really good job at this, Wall Street Trapper. Mm -hmm. Every single morning he does the same thing on his stories. His very first story, fresh out of the bed, is going to be Good Morning Trappers, that same mm. exact graphic good morning trappers then he's going to do a very quick clip of his tv on the bloomberg you know news showing all the the, the stuff and then he's going to start talking to you every single day so now people in his community are calling each other trappers that's what he wants is conditioning for you to be so sold out for the community that now when you think of yourself in this space you're a trapper facts facts that's tough that's tough. I would just add one more thing. I feel like a lot of people, they don't get good because they don't have the consistency. Mm -hmm. Like everybody always talks about quality versus quantity. Oh, I want quality, but you can't achieve quality without quantity. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? So it's just like, if I post, like, it's so funny because I just hit my thousandth post on my social media, right? Mm -hmm. Probably not a lot compared to a lot of other people, but it's, it's, it shows consistency. It's about mm -hmm. three posts a day for a year. And I was able to get better at content, get better at my craft and really position myself because I'm consistently posting. Not yeah. if you only post once a week and I post seven times a week, mm. I'm going to get there seven times faster than you. Yeah. Somebody else who posts two times a day, 14 times a week is going to get there twice as fast as me. Yeah. Yeah. 14 times as fast as you. So it's really up to you, but you have to understand something about data. You have to be watching these things. You have to be checking your metrics, yeah. checking your insights. So many people are just throwing paint at the wall and waiting to see if it dries and sticks. It yeah. doesn't make any sense. You want to be looking at the actual data. All right, cool. This post got 50,000 views. This post got two views. This post got 100,000 views. Maybe this 100,000, this hundredth post, this 100,000 post is telling me something. Yeah. You want to start looking at that data. And I feel like a lot of times also just to kind of like round things out people post for themselves and not for their audience. 100%. That's a fact. That's a big one, bro. Like I can, I love fitness. I love eating. I love being with my girlfriend. Like I love all these different things. People don't follow me for that. Okay. People, we public out here. You know, yeah. In the streets. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like I, I don't, my audience isn't, is not to say that they don't care, but they're just, they're not conditioned to follow me for that. Mm -hmm. yeah. They want to see how do I make money with a business or whatever the case may be, financial literacy. So you have to start looking at this data, but again, you can't receive this data without posting quantity and you can't achieve quality without the quantity. Yeah. That's a fact. Yeah, yeah. That's a fact. I think if I could um, like bring this to full circle, another point is that it, you have to understand that there is internal and external, both sales and marketing. Yeah. And the process starts with their first interaction period. So every single department has to be on point. Customer service can't say, oh, I don't do sales and marketing. Yeah, you do. Yes, you do. How you engage my customers or my clients, how you respond to the email or don't respond to the email, how you speak to them, right? So from a sales perspective, how quickly are we handling a problem? How quickly are we overcoming a customer service issue from a marketing perspective? What's the language that we're using? How do we, how do we greet how do we say goodbye? How do we convert? Like how, what's the body of the email that's marketing? It's the messaging that they're receiving. So on my team, uh, we everybody is referred to as, hey, CEO, or hey, hey. Those are the two Donnie Wiggins ways to greet someone, and that's consistent. You can't come onto my team and greet people the way you want to. That's not my messaging, right? And that's internal for marketing. A great example of this is like Quick Trip. Anybody familiar with the Quick Trip gas station? When you have you been inside of one? When you walk in, what do they do? Hello. Hey, hey, hey! Welcome to Quick Trip. Welcome mm -hmm. to Quick Trip. Super loud, and it's like, oh my god! At first, with your first experience, but 
over and over and over again, you get so accustomed to the quick trips way of doing things. You're not just pulling up to the gas station to get your gas. They make you feel warm and welcome to the point where if they don't say good morning, welcome to quick to trip. That. I was about to say that too. You offended? I almost like yo, you get fired. Bro. Is somebody? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yo, yo, really? Like the other day, I walked in, they didn't say it. He was like too busy. I was like, hope your manager ain't here. Have you bro. been to a like, quick trip? <laughs> we don't have quick trip. So in New quick York. trip is oh, a gas bro. station here, right? And typically, they're 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 the cleanest people who eat gas station food consider them like the premium of gas station dining, right? Those pretzels. They're the, they're the cleanest. You hear me? But no matter how, <laughs> they're the busiest. No matter how busy they are, if you open that door, hello, welcome to Quick Trip, and they're loud. You could be all the way back, welcome to Quick Trip, and you're like, God damn, like, what, what's going on here? And it's even if you're ringing up a customer, it's welcome to Quick Trip, and yeah. you're still taking. So yeah. when you walk in and they don't do it, it I'm sorry, excuse me. Excuse me? <laughs> oh, you're too busy now. Oh, you're too busy. <laughs> oh, you can't multitask? Was that not, did you miss that part of the training? Oh my God. God. Yeah, it's, it's really, they could be cleaning the bathroom and they're like, welcome to Quick Trip. Right. That's just how serious it is. So you have to understand that sales and marketing and customer service, we didn't talk about that, mm. but these things are both external and internal and every single member of your team factors in to how successful those departments are. That's a fact. Um, Y'all learned a lot, right? This was a heavy, heavy episode. Go on and give us a round of applause. Come on. All right. Uh, I need everybody to do me a favor. I need you to subscribe to this podcast. Okay. If you're listening to this podcast, I need you to hit the little follow button. Um, if you're watching this on YouTube, go to Apple or Spotify, hit follow. Are y'all following us on the podcast app? Not on YouTube. Not on YouTube. The podcast app. You are? Let me no, see. No, you're not. Let me, Let me see. see if I throw, no, just no, throw no, no, it. No, 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 no. Don't try to, don't try to be quick it. with it. No, nah, come over here. Come over here. Don't try to be quick with it. Where you listen to your, your fingers where you listen are to moving podcast really fast. Thank you. Let me see. Let me. Uh-uh. What you doing over here? Okay, you weren't you subscribed? He's in there. The, you, the audacity of you to be in the okay, studio and you not subscribe to the podcast. You're doing it now, mm-hmm, though, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Go to your... Do you listen to podcasts on podcasts up? Thank you. Go on and help her. You huh? don't know and you're going to sit in my face? You're going to sit in my face and that's that love. check? I appreciate it. I know you right. subscribe. He's doing it right now back there. I see you. You're doing it right now. It's okay. It's okay. 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 I, and I, I appreciate I it. it. So go to your Apple Podcast app. Okay. Apple Podcast app. Brian. And hit the little follow. Are you subscribed to the podcast? I actually am. Yeah. Let me see. Let us. <laughs> nah, don't try to be quick no, 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 with the no, no, fingers. No, no, no. Oh, oh okay. first one. I, first oh, one. Click it first on, one. Go back, go back, click it, click it, click it, click it. Go, go to the right. I'm listening to it too. Oh, click it. Go in. Let me just make sure the little buttons click. Look, it's a look. I just didn't. I don't download because I had it on space, but it's added though. Okay, it's added. Okay. All right. All right. All right. I'll be on my. My man. Look, I even have the music. Okay, 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 okay. Uh, uh, <laughs> I got the music app removed and got the podcast app. That's love. That's Yo, love. That's here. a okay. bar. I'm here. Do you, did y'all miss that? Yep. I'm here. He's removed the music app off of the home screen of his phone and replaced it with a podcast app. Why did you do that? Why? Visibility, marketing. Every single time I open up my phone, I want to see the podcast. I don't want to see the music. I listen to music. I'm going to hear music. Whenever it comes up, but yeah. I want to see when, as soon as my open up my phone, I have a spare minute. Mm-hmm. I'm having breakfast. I'm driving. I'm having lunch. I let me go open up a podcast, and that's dramatically changed my life because it's exposure. Mm. Yo, how can your life change? Look at your home screen right now. Everybody, take out your what phone. What y'all, what y'all got on the bottoms? How can your life change? So I got so much on my home screen. Most of my stuff is business, but how could your life change over the next twelve months? What if you got on you- the bottom. My phone, the internet. Music. music. You should be ashamed of yourself. Be- no, 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 no. Listen. Now, through here, I listen to my meditations, my frequencies, mm. and my affirmations, right? Gotcha. But how can your life change in the next 12 months if on your home screen in this bottom area here, you had the Bible app, you had Audible, Open it. and you had podcasts? You got the Bible app, you got Audible, and you got podcasts. 
And so anytime you pick up your phone, it's a constant reminder to tap in somewhere here. How can your life change over the next 12 months if we eliminated the foolishness and and put your environment is here too? Yep. What's the environment that your phone is producing for you right now? What environment are you in? Do you have all of the Instagram and the YouTubes and, and you're not building a business on that? You're not leveraging it for your business? Do you have like the the these like shade room apps and all of that? What's on your home screen? Let me see that screen time. Audit it. Mm. Let's look at that screen time. Put that screen time app on that home screen mm. too, so you can be reminded to audit for it every That's single that. week. I love That's it. That. I love it. Brian, man, thank you so much for coming, man. You you add so much value to the podcast. Yeah. We appreciate, I appreciate absolutely. that. Man. Today was amazing. Yeah, it absolutely. Was, it was heavy. Mm-hmm. He actually sent me a little list of things he wanted to talk about. It's almost, I like, I, I it's almost saw like a list, list of demands. I I giggled. Like, you, you giggled yeah. I giggled. Oh my God, right. Unfortunately, I always shoot what, my shot. I always shoot my shot. I was like, "Yo, we never, we you, yo, literally, we never know what's going to happen until we start having a conversation." That's why, if you think about like the most powerful conversations that you've had, it wasn't scripted. It was you was out on a boat with some people, or you was you were just having a conversation with somebody, and that's what we. To, to create here. So, yeah. Brian, how can people contact you? How can they get in touch with you? Yo, absolutely. Um, how can they be sold to? Oh, absolutely. How can they be sold? I, I appreciate yeah. that. Yeah, I, I appreciate that. The whole episode. I appreciate <laughs> that. <laughs> nah, you feel me? So, definitely, if you follow, if you got an Instagram, tap in me on Instagram at Billionaire B. Uh, tap in me there at Billionaire B. If you want to know more about what we got going on, definitely tap in. I, I want to let everybody in the Social Proof Podcast get access to our next masterclass 100% for free. All you got to do is go to myfirsteventspace.com. And we're going to bless y'all. Let's get it. One S-T or F-I-R-S-T? M-Y. Myfirsteventspace.com. But is it M-Y-F-I-R-S-T or one S-T? I'm with you. How do you spell the website? How do you spell first? My, like Mm M-Y, first, F-I-R-S-T, event space. I didn't know if it was one S-T. Oh, I got you. I got you. got you. Yeah, yeah. All spelled out. I was like, I was confused. I was like, (laughs) all spelled out. (laughs) Myfirsteventspace.com. He looked at me like I was crazy. And I was just like, yeah, you're crazy. crazy. (laughs) I've never gotten that question. I was just like, I was thrown off. All right. (laughs) I was never, I was like, huh? I'm sure you already did this, but buy both versions of the website and make them point to each other. Mm. Because you speak so fast, people just may assume right. shorthand version, or they just may type it I'm in. That down. But yeah. get and that's the key for all of you guys. Yep. If you got a website that can be received differently, um, if it's a commonly misspelled word, so like you know, let's just say it's people the I and the E, buy them both and yep. point all the domains Forward to it. your main website. Yep. That's good. I'm gonna double check on that. I love it. Yeah. You got anything to sell us? Uh, yeah, you guys, um, I always have something available. So I work with entrepreneurs to help you grow and scale your businesses. I have resources available, whether you're in the start phase, the grow phase or the scale phase, go to www.sixfigureaccelerateredu.com forward slash links to understand how you can work with me in best capacity. And then also if you're a service-based entrepreneur and you are dynamic at your skill set, but you don't really know how to communicate your messaging on social media through your captions, post to paid. We send you three captions every single day, seven days a week, minus holidays for just $37 a month. I give you the exact word for word caption. If you're ever on my social media and you like Donnie Wright dope captions, cause I do, mm-hmm. um, you need to get captions written like me. And I share that with you. 404-737-2767. Text the words post to paid. Good. Mm. Um, what was that website I'm, again? For what? I want a funnel hack. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to see it on the replay. Yo, my funnel is, if you go to it, it's dumb basic. My funnel has been working for the last three years. I have a picture and a paragraph. You opt in and it takes you straight to a VSL, just a video. Mm. It's so cheesy. I built it myself before I could afford to like get all the fancy stuff. Then later t- last year, I tried to have a fancy funnel built, really nice looking, all my pictures, the best shots. Funnel converted at n- zero. Mm. We went right back to that super basic. It's literally a rectangle. Look at it. Sixfigureedu.com. S-I-X figure edu.com. So basic, but that thing worked. You know why? Because it's to the point. It's converting, converting. All right, let me try my skills. Look at you. Uh, okay. okay, okay. We um, got, we, all right, how to earn six figures as a coach consultant. All right. Is it ba- like when you land on it, you know what I do? Straight, it's straight up. Straight up, to the point. To the it's point. no fluff. It's no frou-frou, a whole lot of pictures. Now I do, in full transparency, I want a pretty website. I want something that looks more sophisticated, look like money. 
It just hasn't been converting the way that converts for mm. me. Good. That's right. when you pay attention to your metrics. That's a fact. Yeah. I'm That's sorry. A, I'm David a, wants to sell something. Let him. Let him <laughs> d- take a deep breath. <laughs> let it out. Okay. Shake it off real quick. Just shake it off. Mm. Ooh. Messaging. Remember who you're talking to. <laughs> Have you been struggling as an entrepreneur? <laughs> No. Okay, well, no. Uh, Yo. I don't think you. I, I don't think you was, all the way out. Hold on, no, I thought that was the. Um, I don't know. That was that the one. the um, the objection. You've been struggling as an entrepreneur. Struggling to do what though? But what kind of struggle are we talking about? Exactly. Mad struggles as an entrepreneur. Mad right. struggle. Okay, you got mad struggles as an entrepreneur. Okay. But is that like mental battles? Is that like demons I'm facing? Is that like you know lack of hit, productivity? Hit my car. I don't like, have the money. I don't. I'm lacking funding. What kind of struggle exactly? Like I don't know what to say to people. What is I don't know struggle? How to sell. What is struggle? Is that like in a kind of internal battle? Like, yeah, I mean it could be. You no. Know? Yeah, I, <laughs> you want to do it do no, it no more? more yeah. I don't even want to tell anybody what I have anymore. I don't even want to sell anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Yo, I hear people. I don't want to do it. Go to the morning Pull up. It's a really great community. It'll help you as an entrepreneur, help you make more money in all your struggles. If you are struggling so, as an entrepreneur, if you are struggling as an entrepreneur, you're tired of not getting the sales that you want in your business. If you want to be around a community that is going to take you to the next level, I need you to go to the morningmeetup.com right now. You're going to network with six, seven, and eight figure entrepreneurs day in and day out, tapping with me and Donnie and Dave. Let's get it. Let's go. The morning. Ooh. Ooh. Hey, clip that up. Let's run that as an ad. Like, <laughs> no, seriously. Serious, no, seriously, take that part out. That's at minute it 76. Throw that, yes. Yo. Minute 76. Let's throw that in there. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, thank y'all for supporting, y'all. We out. Share this with somebody. Peace. Bye-bye. You just watched this whole episode. If you like this episode, watch this one right here. Click right here. You're going to like this one if you like the one you just watched. Check it out.